Right, today we're going to make fairy cakes using the creaming method. So into my bowl, I am putting 100 grams of caster sugar, and then I'm going to um, add 100 grams of margarine, which is a plant fat. I'm going to use an electric whisk, so always check that the plug and the flex are in good condition, that you've got dry hands before plugging in, and then test it by using the control on top. This one releases the beaters that you'll see later. This one controls. So check it's working, and then in we go. We can see that it is finished when I just get a table knife, stand the whisk on the flat end when you're not using it. I just squash it to the side of the bowl. You can see how soft and creamy it is and you can no longer see the granules of sugar. So our next stage is going to crack two eggs into a measuring jug. I've put them just in the sieve so they don't rock off. I'm using a fork because I'm going to beat these eggs with it in a minute. Crack it on the side of the egg, tap it until it cracks, then get your thumbs in. And I use this method rather than tapping it on the side because if you do have an accident and get shell in, it's easy to remove the shell from the jug. If it drops on the table and then runs on your shoes, it's no joke. So I'll crack again. In go, two eggs. And I'm just going to beat together the yellow part, which is the yolk, with the clear part, which is the white. Little circles in your jug. A few seconds. And I'm going to gradually add this to the sugar and margarine mixture. If I added it all at once, with chance of it curdling, and it would look like scrambled egg, and we'd lose a lot of the air. So a little bit, guess about a teaspoonful at a time. And then we're going to whisk in a little bit more. Again. going to stop the whisk and get the parts from around the edge of the bowl and then in two more stages I think we will have all the egg incorporated at this point we have finished with the electric whisk so with dry hands, I'm going to unplug it from the electricity. I'm going to press the middle button now. I'm going to use my jug to put the beaters. Those go in for washing up and the motor goes back on the table with the appliances. If you do get it messy, use a dry tea towel to give it a wipe. Now eggs have an amazing ability um, to trap air which we've whisked into these cakes and also it's known as an emulsifier there's a substance in the yolk 
called lecithin that helps keep oil and water stable. It stops it separating, which you can see. And now I'm going to sieve in 100 grams self-raising flour. So you'll notice all the ingredients have been 100 grams to two eggs. And I'm just going to tap the side of the sieve. We're incorporating air and getting any lumps out of the flour because we want a nice, light, fluffy cake. Just use the spoon for the last little bits. And now I'm going to fold this in, which means using a figure of eight movement with your spoon. So draw number eight first practice. That's just what I am doing in my bowl. Don't be tempted to just stir it or whisk it in because we'll lose a lot of the air that we've spent time incorporating into the sponge mixture. I'm also going to add a flavouring ingredient to my cakes. I'm going to add about a teaspoonful of vanilla flavouring, just about half a cap. Again, don't do it over your bowl because if you do slip, you'll ruin your mixture. So we've got that teaspoonful going in there. And I can carry on the folding of these cakes. Not forgetting the sides of your bowl, just any little bits of flour you might have remaining. A lot of recipes say that it should be drop consistency. And what this means is a spoonful if you just give it a little shake, it drops from your spoon. So I think we're ready to go with that. Could add other flavorings at this point, things like chocolate chips, some lemon or orange zest to add flavor to it, or some cocoa. If we added cocoa, we would replace 25 grams of flour with 25 grams cocoa at the sieving in stage. So I'm going to get a cake tin. It makes 12 cakes. And I'm going to put some paper cases in each one. We're going to aim for quality control, which means getting the same amount in each cake. So what I'm going to do is get one tablespoon, one flattish tablespoon in each cake. This is known as the cake batter. Try not to get it on the side of your caked in which makes your washing up life a lot easier and we're going to bake these cakes in an oven at gas 5 or 190 degrees celsius if it's a fan oven you might need to reduce it down to about 160 If you have any mixture left in your bowl, you can just go around checking if you've been a little bit stingy with any. And we should have one last. We could use a spatula to get even more cake mixture out. I think it's gonna be fine. This last one. I'm just gonna use the very last bits. here this one looks a little bit less just use eye to see and I think at that I'm happy with that it's going to take them over to the oven and we're going to bake them in the center position where possible of a preheated oven gas 5 or 190 degrees celsius right to preheat the oven we get the second control on the left and it's colored in for the main oven which is the one nearest to the floor this point we press in and press towards number nine and then hold it flat to the cooker and click the ignition, which is the star button. We look for a blue flame in the back of a gas cooker and then I'm setting the temperature to gas five. Now the three safe rules for using the oven 
are to wear oven gloves to protect your hands, to have an oven buddy to hold the oven door, and to stand at arm's length because a big rush of heat will come out and burn your face. So now that rush has gone, we'd have an oven buddy holding this side in class. And now we're going to go in and place it on the centre position landscape near the front of the oven so that we can see our cakes when we get go to check on them. And I'm going to check those after 10 minutes. It's the 10 minute rule, but they will probably take about 15. After 15 minutes, I've looked through the oven door and I'm happy that the cakes look well risen and golden. So remembering our oven safety, oven gloves, arms length, and an oven buddy to hold your oven open. I'm going to grab this. A common mistake of people burning this part of the ham by reaching in. If you can't grab it, pull out the shelf a little bit to grab it. Pop it on top of the oven. Shelf back in, close the oven. On top of the hob, this is designed to be hot, it's heat resistant glass. We can look at the colour and now a quick and easy check is just using your fingertip, press gently near the centre and they bounce back. I say the centre because heat travels from the outside in and they're likely to be the last ones cooked. So I'm happy that they are baked. I'm going to pop it on a pan stand to stop the table getting burnt up. And now I'm going to remove them to a cooling wire, but this tray will stay hot for at least five minutes. So use a tablespoon just to lift them and then the edge of the paper, put them on a cooling wire to cool. And what we're going to do now is we only have one hour lessons we're going to label a freezer bag when they are cool and put them in the freezer to decorate next lesson.